Okay, minions. We're about to embark on the elevator ritual starting on the first floor. Tony, the security guard, totally hooked me up and shut off the security camera in the elevator for 10 whole minutes. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 unsolved internet mysteries. For this list, we're looking at the most elusive enigmas circulating around these very interwebs. Have you tried cracking these cases? Let us know in the comments below. We always were self-supporting, which a lot of entities that were in our position might not be. Number 20, Kanye Quest 3030. <laughs> In 2013, a bizarre game called Kanye Quest 3030 was released for PC. Players controlled Kanye West and fought other rappers like Eminem and LL Cool J in Pokemon-style battles. However, this was merely a front for the so-called real game. If the player typed the word ascend into a dialogue box, they were taken to a freaky secret area. This segment of the game asked players for their personal information and contained a QR code that, if activated, would supposedly pull the user's IP. Some people believe this game was created by a cult known as Ascensionism and that it served as a recruitment tool. Others think it's a weird alternate reality game. Either way, it's super creepy. Number 19, GhostNet. Just went through line by line, thousands of lines, looking for activity which was anomalous, if you like. And in that, in that way, we uncovered this uh, uh, the, the tip of the iceberg. There's a reason this thing is called GhostNet. Uncovered in 2009, GhostNet refers to a massive cyber spying operation that targeted over a thousand computers in over a hundred countries. Emails bearing sketchy attachments were sent to high-profile targets like foreign embassies and government offices. When opened, it would give the spies control over the computers. The command infrastructure was based in China, but no conclusive link to the Chinese government was made and the country denied any and all involvement in the attacks. What? I don't think this is just a DDoS attack. To this day, no one knows who exactly was responsible. They are as invisible and intangible as a ghost. You can just imagine uh, what an attacker could do with this kind of tool in place. Uh, from retrieving all of the documents to recording all of the keystrokes, sending email as if it was you, because it really is coming from your email client on your computer. Number 18, Lake City Quiet Pills. Now, for something like this, you're going to need two guns, the one you're going to use and a backup. This sounds like a killer title for a crime novel, but it's a very real thing that was found on Reddit. The story involves users named Religion of Peace and 2-6. The former posted something in relation to Lake City Quiet Pills, only for the latter to announce the other user's death not a day later. Turns out they both may have been involved with a shady website called LakeCityQuietPills.com. Redditors started to believe that Quiet Pills was a euphemism for bullets, and that the website was a part of an international assassination ring. There was mention of an upcoming event at a hotel, and the specified date coincided with the 2010 assassination of Mahmoud El Mabrou, who was killed inside a Dubai hotel. Did Reddit users stumble upon a secret cabal of hitmen? Whoa, 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 hey, wh uh, wait, wait, what's this for? Full of mess. What? Wouldn't want to leave a stain now, would we? Oh my god, I knew it. Who's first? No, who's no, first? No, 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 you no, we, don't, we don't, don't want you to kill us. Yeah, we want Number 17, Unfavorable Semicircle. YouTube can be a weird place, and it is filled with some puzzling videos. Beginning in April of 2015, a user called Unfavorable Semicircle began uploading some very strange videos. These didn't have proper titles or descriptions, and they were very abstract in content. Nothing about them really made sense, and the videos ranged from just a few seconds to 11 hours in length. The channel quickly caught the attention of internet sleuths and even the BBC, who reported on it in 2016. In a shocking turn of events, Unfavorable Semicircle was suspended by YouTube shortly after the BBC piece had been published, and has never been heard from again. Number 16, the most mysterious song on the internet. There are millions of songs out there. Some are bound to get lost. The most mysterious song on the internet refers to a tune that once aired on the German radio station NDR. Sometime in the early 80s, 
a man known only as Darius S. recorded the song off the radio alongside other popular singles of the time. Darius digitized his cassette playlist in 2004, but that song from the 80s was long forgotten. It was Darius' sister Lydia who began using the internet to search for the mysterious Diddy, but to no avail. The search has continued since 2007 and is now a bona fide web phenomenon. Unfortunately, no one has been able to crack the case of the mystery track. <laughs> Number 15, Grave Robbing for Morons. It smells, it's hard, but I'm um, in a way, it like, it's weird and everything. You can see what the person looked like when they first died. Could we have a genuine body snatcher on our hands? Some people certainly think so. Grave Robbing for Morons is a famous VHS tape of unknown origin. It depicts a young man holding a human skull and giving detailed instructions for robbing graves. No one knows where the tape came from who is in it, or even if it's genuine. You, know, you get high prices, the more famous they are, get the most high prices, All right? So if that person really wants it, they will get that money. The man in the video calls himself Anthony, and some people believe it could be Anthony Casamassima, who was arrested for pillaging graves in the late 90s. Others believe it's a hoax made by a bootlegger known as Screws. Real or not, the video is supremely creepy. Okay, so, uh, so after you wash it, so it'll be like brown and, and like beige-ish, okay? But if you find something new, it will be reddish all around it. Number 14, the Heaven's Gate website. Your only chance to survive or evacuate is to leave with us. Heaven's Gate was a small American cult that was made famous in March of 1997 after 39 members of the cult took their own lives in order to ascend to a new plane of existence. A few of the members who survived have since been given the task to preserve the group's legacy digitally. Heaven's Gate's website remains in operation, and as much as it is a glorious time capsule back to 90s web design, it also proclaims messages about leaving, quote, this world. No one really knows who runs the website, but all signs point to a couple named Mark and Sarah King. They did look to the internet as a way to reach out and connect with people. They began uploading content to their website. Number 13, Alex from 4chan. Spend about two minutes on 4chan and you're bound to come across something disturbing but this probably takes the cake. In April of 2013, a post was made providing coordinates to an industrial area of Tennessee. Accompanying the coordinates was a piece of text claiming that a prize was awaiting those who visited. After users joked about going, the OP provided unsettling pictures of what looked like human remains in a body bag. A user calling himself Alex then visited the location and documented his frightening progress, but he abruptly stopped posting after hearing someone approaching. Maybe Alex was real and met a tragic fate, or maybe it was all just an elaborate hoax concocted by the original poster. Who knows? <laughs> Number 12, John Titer. We all want to believe in time travel, and John Titer may be proof of its existence. It's my hope that if you're watching this video, Something incredible has happened. A user named time travel underscore zero posted on the Time Travel Institute and Art Bell BBS forums in the early 2000s. They claimed to be a time traveler from the year 2036, describing the workings of a time machine in detail and even making various predictions about the future. The most elaborate was an American Civil War that would break out in 2005 and lead to World War III. <laughs> The posts were eventually traced to a Florida lawyer named Larry Haber, and it's now believed that both Larry and his brother Richard were the men behind John Titer. Still, even a likely conclusion is not certifiable proof, and the enticing posts remain a mystery. Okay, turn it on. Turn off, turn off. 
piece of crap, it doesn't work. Number 11, The Elevator Game. Okay, so apparently there is a popular Korean game called The Elevator Ritual. What is that? So first, you have to have a hotel that is at least 10 floors, which lucky for us, Lennox has more than 10 floors. Mm, of course. It seems like every other month, the kids are participating in a new trend. One dating a while back was called The Elevator Game. This trend originated in Korea and was said to bring its players into another dimension. Okay guys, looks like the Korean elevator game is indeed a big hoax. I knew it from the get-go. The ritual game comes with a specific set of rules and instructions like going to specific floors in a building and refusing to speak to the mysterious woman who supposedly eventually enters the elevator. The game gained popularity after the death of Elisa Lam, as some people theorized that she was participating in the game. You could see the body movements, twisting and turning. And now she appears to be counting with her fingers. It's just such bizarre behavior. Though this might just be some glorified creepypasta, one thing is for sure. It was popular enough to get a movie adaptation. Number 10, the Jack Freese emails. Right here, like it says, Jack Farise, I'm watching. And it said, I'm watching. Did you hear me? I'm at your house. It's one of the greatest and most popular ghost stories of the 2010s. Jack Freese contacts his friends and family from beyond the grave through the modern miracle of smartphones. Freese passed away in 2011, and people started getting strange emails shortly after. These emails were of a very personal nature with inside jokes and things that only Freese would have known about including a dream his cousin had about him. Uh, the email was sent actually November 21st at 10.30 at night. It just said, hey Jim, how you doing? I knew you were gonna break your ankle. Tried to warn you, gotta be careful. Numerous theories have been put forth regarding the source of the emails, like scheduled sending and even Freese's mother posing as her deceased son. Either way, his friends and family were happy to hear from him, and that is good enough for us. I would like to say Jack sent it, just because I look at it as He's gone, but he's still trying to connect with me and still trying to tell me things to move along and feel better. Number nine, the Publius Enigma. For this internet puzzle, we're going back to 1994, which makes this one of the earliest viral internet mysteries. At the time, Pink Floyd was on their Division Bell world tour, and a user by the name of Publius posted a cryptic riddle relating to the band's album on a fan forum. On July 16th, Publius wrote on the forum that he would prove his authenticity in person. And two nights later, the words Enigma Publius were briefly spelled out in the stage lights at a Pink Floyd concert. Band members David Gilmour and Nick Mason claim that it was all a marketing stunt by the record company. Regardless, the riddle itself has never been solved. Then again, maybe it was never intended to be. Number eight, Valor por Tamaulipas. Given its high level of journalist assassinations, Mexico is among the most dangerous countries for those in the press. This makes the work of Valor por Tamaulipas so much more honorable. This was a Facebook page run by, well, no one knows. They would report on violence in the state of Tamaulipas, with most instances linking back to organized crime. UT Brownsville Chairman of Government Studies, Dr. Guadalupe Correa Cabrera, says people in Mexico, and particularly in Tamaulipas, have turned to social media to stay informed about organized crime and its effects on the community. By exposing such people, the administrator or administrators were putting themselves at great personal risk. Indeed. One criminal organization offered around $50,000 for information about them and their family. But thankfully, none of their identities were ever revealed. How, how they are creating fear also through YouTube, through also through social media, saying, okay, or presenting images, right? If you do this, I'll kill you. And this is not the first attempt to, to terrorize media, social media users. Number seven, oct282011.com. No, no, no. The internet is filled with many haunting and enigmatic websites, and oct282011.com was one of them. The page consisted of little more than a dark screen, some cryptic text that no one understood, plus a phone number. This is where things get really creepy. Those who actually called the number reported a series of unsettling noises, such as strange voices, heavy breathing, loud beeps, and one person even claimed to hear something being dragged across a floor. Hello? Hello? No one knew what 
the heck was going on, and October 28th, 2011 didn't amount to much either. That is, unless you count the release of DreamWorks Puss in Boots. What can I say? I was a bad kitty. The site was taken down in 2015, leaving behind a ton of questions that are still unanswered. Number 6. 973-at-namu-973.com Unlike oct28.2011.com, this website is still up and running, so you can explore it to your heart's content. Fair warning, you might be there a while trying to figure it all out. It's more like a Russian doll than a website, with links opening more links that open other links that open… well, you get the idea. The whole thing is super weird, with pages featuring distressing pictures, numerology, and Bible passages. <laughs> Someone get Robert Langdon on the phone stat. Moment of truth. To this day, both the administrator and the nature of their website are unknown. It is one of the internet's finest and more tantalizing mysteries. What is 23? Is it God? Two divided by three, point six six six. Six six six, number the devil. Number five, Markovian Parallax Denigrate. This is an all-time classic internet puzzle, and also one of the first. It dates back to 1996, when nonsensical texts were posted to the discussion system Usenet. Usenet is an online bulletin board system where you can post really almost anything, and it's organized by topic. Every single post had the subject line Markovian Parallax Denigrate, and the messages themselves were filled with even more unintelligible nonsense. It's not necessarily creepy or troublesome, just weird. Many people believe that the messages are spam or some kind of primitive text generator, while others think it was the ramblings of a single troll. Okay, okay, we need proof that we were here, right? Uh... Yeah, garbage, okay, give me garbage. Whatever they are, the posts are no clearer today than they were in the 90s, and no one has any idea what they're supposed to mean. Number 4. Internet Black Holes Inspiring many epic works of science fiction, black holes as defined by NASA are, quote, regions in space where the pulling force of gravity is so strong that light is not able to escape. The name was lent to this strange phenomenon in which web traffic simply disappears. It's not buffering at all! Relax! Hit refresh! Guys, I think the internet is… gone! That can't happen. Working much like a black hole in space, an internet black hole sucks in discarded data packets when they can't reach a router that's either offline or disconnected. Neither the sender nor the recipient are informed of the delivery's failure, and the packet of info just up and vanishes from the digital sphere. Number 3. Bitcoin's Founder Bitcoin. May have heard of it. Few understand it. But that's not the mystery. The mystery lies in the currency's founder, or maybe founders. Absolutely nothing is known about the person or people responsible for Bitcoin. I just believe that somebody put that fictitious name in there. Mm -hmm. Satoshi Nakamoto and Bitcoin, or Bitcoin. All we have is the pseudonym Satoshi Nakamoto and a few alleged bits of personal information, like a Japanese heritage and the alma mater California State Polytechnic University Pomona. A few people have been put forth as potential suspects, and an Australian computer scientist named Craig Stephen Wright has claimed to be Nakamoto. However, many experts doubt his claim. Unfortunately, it is the best we have at the moment in deducing Nakamoto's identity. Well, there are two competing theories. There's the good Satoshi hypothesis, which holds that Satoshi really wanted to let Bitcoin go and become its own thing without him. The other hypothesis is that Satoshi really just saw Bitcoin taking off and wanted to keep his privacy. Number 2. R slash A858 Every tenth line of code written, they have to drink a shot. And hacking's supposed to be stealth, so every time the server detects an intrusion, the candidate responsible has to drink a shot. No other mystery has captivated Reddit quite like A858. In the early 2010s, a mystifying subreddit was created that contained nothing but strings of letters and numbers. It soon gained popularity, and many Redditors devoted many hours to cracking the code. Some messages were successfully decoded, but not many. And unfortunately for the internet sleuths who dedicated countless hours to solving the case, it led nowhere. The subreddit went private in 2016, leaving Redditors stumbling in the dark without answers. 
No one even knows why A858 was created in the first place, but hey, at least a valiant effort was made. Ready? Yes. M. M. Y. Y. M. M. S. S. A. A. I. I. C. C. T. T. R. R. I. I. S. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Cicada 3301 Curiosity kills. A quick search showed Cicada 3301 had been headhunting super geniuses from around the world for years using this kind of intellectual scavenger hunt. Perhaps the greatest internet mystery of all was derived from where else but 4chan on January 4th, 2012. The post consisted of an elaborate puzzle centered around data security and cryptography. Two more puzzles followed in 2013 and 2014, both of which were again posted on January 4th. While the first two were eventually cracked, the third remains frustratingly unsolved. The puzzles were apparently made to recruit, quote, highly intelligent individuals for some cryptography-based mission or job. Many people believe it has something to do with government agencies like the NSA or CIA. Others believe that the challenges have a darker source and could be linked to cults or conspiracies. It's all conjecture. They're elusive. Kind of like the IT department of the Illuminati. But everyone who knows them knows that they want to change the world. For now, though, it is all up to individual discretion. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.